Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about my favorite top five anti-inflammatories that you can utilize to impact your life. So let's get right into it. Top five anti-inflammatories. Number one, diet. There are a variety of different diets, AIP, paleo, carnivore, keto, Mediterranean diet, FODMAP diet. Essentially all these diets, what they do it really is it reduces the inflammatory load on our body. So let's take an example of an AIP diet. It eliminates the top five category of foods that causes or most commonly causes inflammation in people. Things like gluten, dairy, soy, lectins, and nightshades. Let's take an example of a carnivore diet. So basically eating meats and organ meats, etc. But what does it really do? It eliminates other food proteins that can be inflammatory, such as gluten, dairy, soy, right? So at the end of the day, you can't stay on a specific diet forever. But what you can do is do a anti-inflammatory, or what we call a elimination diet, and then try to add in foods every three to five days to see if it has a effect on you. So, if you did an anti-inflammatory diet or an AIP diet for let's say six weeks, at that time you should be adding foods back in. So you can add in foods that you think are safe and add only one type of food every three to five days and note any symptoms that you may have related to those foods. So the best way to do a diet is to eliminate and then reintroduce so your gut diversity doesn't suffer. You need to have different uh, food varieties for your gut to uh, really thrive. Number two, sleep. You need deep restorative sleep. Cannot work on three hours of sleep, four hours of sleep. You need to sleep at a certain time, wake up at a certain time. You have to think about sleep hygiene. Make sure you're not on your computer or your phone uh, immediately before bed. I would suggest a very dark room, a cool room, uh, also will be helpful for a lot of people. One of the major things that impacts sleep is hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. Oftentimes these patients will eat dinner and because they don't want to gain weight, they won't eat anything from like seven o'clock until the next morning. However, hypoglycemics will get up around two or three in the morning and can't fall back asleep. And the reason is their blood sugar will drop around that time. And when that drops, cortisol will go up. It will signal the liver to produce sugar, okay? When cortisol goes up, it wakes you out of a deep sleep. So those are the people who will fall asleep okay, but will get up in the middle of the night and can't fall back asleep for half an hour, hour, or sometimes they will go to the fridge and eat something so they can fall back asleep. The other is diabetes or insulin resistance where you have high blood sugar. Those are the people who will fall asleep on the couch watching TV after dinner, and then they have a hard time falling asleep afterwards. So they have interrupted sleep. Also, they'll have frequent urination, so they will get up multiple times throughout the night. In other words, prostate issues, all right? So if you have prosthetic issues in terms of hypertrophy, you can have some problems with sleep. Now there are many others, but those are your basic ones that impact your sleep. Cold plunges. I had a separate video on cold plunges or cold showers, and really it really can impact your life significantly. So it'll improve immune function, uh, speeds up your metabolism, decreases pain, improves mood and anxiety, and exercise recovery is also very good with cold plunges. So you see a lot of high-level athletes will go into a cold plunge after a very vigorous workout, okay? Number four, stress management. It's very important to manage the stress levels. So things like meditation, deep belly breathing, alternate nostril breathing, okay? Exercise is very important because it helps to manage the stress. So some sort of vigorous exercise would be great. Planning. So 
People also perseverate about things that they have to do. They have so many things on their mind that they think they have to do. And then they go through the day thinking about it, but never really accomplishing it. So planning is very important for stress management. So the night before, you jot down all the things you think you have to do for the next day, right? And it keeps it on the paper, not in your mind. Get up in the morning, read your to-do list, and you'll be surprised how quickly you can get through your to-do list if you have it on, on paper and written down and you have a plan. So what you think is many things that you have to do and it's just you know wearing on you, if you wrote it down and then plan for it, you can get it done pretty quickly most times. Half day of me time per week. What does that mean? You should take half a day, no matter how busy you are, you have children, you have work, you have a spouse, you have business, you have whatever it is, but you should make half a day of me time available that you can utilize for whatever you want to do. That could be catching up on some sleep. Some people, it could be just working on their car. Some people just going to the movies or just doing nothing. So you need half a day of me time per week in order to reduce your stress load. Obviously, there's other stressors that you can't control out of your, your hands, but you still have to build up your resilience uh, to the stress. So you have to do something to help manage that. Number five, intermittent fasting. You have eight hour uh, eating window and a 16 hour fast, or you can do a six hour window of eating and an 18 hour fast, four hour and a 20 hour fast. You can do a one day fast per week. You can do a three day water fast if you like. You can also do what we call the lemon lime fast for three days. This causes autophagy. Okay, it's important. It also prevents those frequent insulin spikes, which can be inflammatory. So every time you eat or you're eating multiple times a day, sometimes it causes in, uh, insulin spikes and causes inflammation. So having intermittent fasting or three day fast gives you a break from those insulin spikes. These, you have to be careful if you have severe hyperglycemia, you have to be more keto adaptive before you can try to do intermittent fasting if you have hypoglycemia. So you have to be careful if you have very low blood sugar. Bonus, laughter. You have to laugh, okay? When I make my videos, I have a pretty serious demeanor, right? But outside of my office and outside of making videos, I'm usually laughing and playing around with the kids and really enjoying life because laughter is very healing increases endorphins and enkephalons. It makes you feel good, the good hormones. It's also anti-inflammatory. Watch a funny movie every day, okay? Watch a 30-minute sitcom that you really like. You need to laugh in order to heal, okay? So if you look at my top five anti-inflammatories, it actually doesn't include a supplement, right? Supplements are easy, right? This is good for me, I'm gonna take some more. I'm gonna take curcumin for my inflammation. I'm gonna take my quercetin. I'm gonna take more vitamin D, right? That's easy to do. However, lifestyle management, which are truly anti-inflammatory and can have true impact on your life, is more difficult. It's hard to go on a diet. It's hard to do intermittent fasting. It's hard to do a cold shower, right? But things that are a little bit more difficult can have a bigger impact on your life. It's not just about supplements. Okay? You have to make the lifestyle changes in order to impact your health in a profound way. After you do your lifestyle changes, that is when you incorporate your supplementation and can have a bigger profound uh, effect for optimal health. Okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.